climate change and its devastating impacts are now accelerating faster than ever, according to the UN's new climate report out this month. And yet FEMA's national flood insurance program hasn't changed at all since its inception, but it is about to. Starting in October, the NFIP's insurance pricing will reflect a property's unique flood risk, finally factoring in climate change. As of now, federal flood insurance is based on a property's 1% annual chance of flooding and its elevation. Under the new model, FEMA will also look at the home's replacement cost, whether the risk is rainfall, river or coastal flooding, and how close the property is to the source of that potential flooding. And most importantly, FEMA will now factor in future catastrophic modeling from climate change, including sea level rise, drought and wildfires. It's a complete transformation of the way that we're developing what your risk is for your property and then price it accordingly. Because as of now, someone in Florida with a million dollar home and someone in Montana with a $200,000 home are paying the same rate for insurance, even though their risk is decidedly different. Under the new model, Morstad says rates will go up for some and down for others. It's just important that we address that inequity, that the lower value homes shouldn't be subsidizing the higher value homes going forward. Changing that, however, will inevitably change the value of some homes. Matthew Ebay founded First Street, which calculates flood risk scores for every home in America. So depending on how much that insurance goes up, it's going to correlate perfectly to the value of that home for any new home buyer who comes in and says, this home looks great, but now I have to pay $6,000, $10,000, whatever it might be a year in flood insurance, which is just going to take away from the value of the actual asset itself. Now about 30% of the homeowners who buy FEMA flood insurance are not in mandatory FEMA flood zones. They buy it voluntarily and they could actually see some of the bigger price increases because their homes likely have higher values. All of it is necessary, however, not just for equality in the program, but to keep the program afloat financially. FEMA has been hard hit by the number of disasters hitting areas where homeowners have no flood insurance. Andrew? So when you think about places in Florida or other places along the coast, do you, do you think there's going to be a material impact in terms of the pricing on homes? I think that the premiums will go up for a lot of those homes, yes. For some, it will just go up the normal 10 percent that FEMA premiums go up every year, and for some, it may go lower. But for a lot of homes that are at most risk, you will see those premiums go up. And again, in the fall, when FEMA is going up for its reauthorization with Congress, they're actually putting forth proposals to change how the maps are made, because we know so many homes now are outside of those FEMA flood zones. But do you think it's going to substantially change the values of those homes? I know I think that's the big question right now is how much, how well, big an impact that has. Right. And that's what we were talking about, because, look, anything that changes what you have to do in your input costs into a home, if I'm buying a home and I see that I have to pay more flood insurance on it that I'm required to that I thought I was going to have to pay before, then I want to pay less for that home. So it absolutely changes the value of some homes. For some, perhaps it makes the home value even higher because they're paying less for flood insurance than they might have had to before. So, again, anything that you have to pay, the input costs of a home changes that value of the home. Right. And you say the actual flood zones aren't changing themselves, but we are seeing more disasters in areas that are outside of those zones. So why aren't they changing those? Well, so they're congressionally mandated. Every five years, they're reassessed, and that is by Congress. So again, this fall, they will be looking at changing some of the ways that they determine those flood zones and how often they do because of climate change. But as of now, it's still a congressional mandate. But this is the first time they've really got, you know, administration support for this, and they're going to go hard in the fall in Congress to try to change some of that. Okay. Diana Olick, it's a longer conversation. I'm, I'm actually fascinated. There's so many other issues that relate this to private insurance and other things. But... Uh, more to come. Thanks.